For Ryan Casey Waller, rock bottom happened when he was leading a Sunday service and he was completely drunk. If you had asked him how he was doing just the day before, he would have said fine. But after that Sunday disaster, Ryan couldn't deny it any longer. He suffered from depression and he needed help. Ryan Casey Waller is a licensed psychotherapist, lawyer, and pastor. He also suffers from depression and anxiety. In his book, Depression, Anxiety, and Other Things We Don't Want to Talk About, Waller not only shares his struggles with mental illness, but he also examines the intersection of biology, psychology, and spirituality, reminding us all that hope starts now. Ryan Casey Waller joins us now via Skype. Ryan, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. You are a pastor and a psychotherapist who's also struggled with mental illness. You know, a lot of people deny that any of that is happening in their lives because they think it's shameful and they don't seek help. What led you to seek help? I sought help because ultimately my pain got to the point where I needed to. You know, oftentimes with depression and anxiety, what can make it so difficult is we don't know when the pain is going to end. And so when it gets bad enough, we begin to not be able to imagine a future for ourselves. And I was really at that place the first time my depression came around. It got so bad that I couldn't envision what life was going to look like if I had to go on dealing with the kind of pain that I was dealing with. And so it was at that point I thought, I really need to avail myself to what else is out there. And that was the first time that I sought the care of a therapist and then ultimately also the use of medication. You know, this pandemic that we're in has isolated people for long stretches of time. Has that exacerbated the mental health crisis? Oh, it absolutely has. You know, one of the worst parts about suffering from depression and anxiety is that your brain tells you that A, nobody has ever felt as bad as you've felt and that B, there's nobody that can understand how it is that you are feeling. And what's happened during the pandemic as we've been pulled apart and separated from one another, anyone who was already experiencing some of those feelings, if they don't have a strong support network or other people around them, those feelings have only intensified. And for people who have gone into the pandemic not already struggling with their mental health, many of them have begun to experience these same feelings of feeling isolated and not connected. You know, one of the primary things we know that we need as human beings is connectedness to other people. It was the only thing in the beginning of the Bible that God said wasn't good, that man was alone. So we desperately need one another. And so it's absolutely made these issues more difficult. You talk about three tools in your book that help people who struggle, therapy, medication, and other people. How does all of this work and why so important? Yeah, it's so critical, especially for Christians, because oftentimes we feel like if we avail ourselves to the resources in the mental health community, that's somehow an indictment of our faith, that we didn't believe enough. And what I want Christians to know is that mental health suffering is just like any other kind of suffering. You know, God doesn't promise to relieve our suffering, but to fill our suffering with his presence. And so one of the ways that we can do that, if we are struggling, is to avail ourselves to these three tools. They're not going to work for everyone, but in most cases, one, if not all three, are going to be helpful. So the first is psychotherapy, to availing yourself to a professional, to go and to sit down with a therapist, somebody who's trained to listen to you, to diagnose, to understand what's going on, and then serve you in a way that is only in your best interest. So there's therapy and there's tremendous benefits to that. Then there are also cases for which depression and anxiety are biological. And so for many people, just the introduction of some sort of psychotropic medication can significantly reduce the symptoms that they're having. Now, hear me out, there is no medication that can cure mental illness. But oftentimes when we combine medication with psychotherapy, we can see a dramatic reduction, reduction in the symptoms, you know, improved health. But then thirdly, and this is often overlooked, is the value of a really good community. Uh, an addiction psychiatrist told me once 
that if he can just get his patients plugged into a community where they know people and they are known by others, then half the battle is won. We're talking about people who are seriously ill. I said, you're telling me that, that the people who have a life and death addiction, they have a, a significant better chance of getting better if they just have a friend? And he said, yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. So I often encourage people, if you're struggling, avail yourself to a therapist to see if that's helped to you. Talk to your doctor potentially about medication and find a community where you can know people and they can know you so you can not face this alone. You know, sometimes, Ryan, when someone is physically ill, you can see what they're struggling with. And so your compassion and your understanding just automatically come. But often with mental illness, I think people feel frustrated. What can those of us who know someone who's struggling with depression or mental illness, how do we, how do we help them handle that? Yeah, that's a great question. The best thing that we can do is simply not be afraid to ask the question and do it in a non-judgmental way. So if you sense that someone is struggling, ask them, are you feeling depressed? Don't be afraid to even ask, are you considering hurting yourself? Do you want to die? Yeah. A lot of times we are frustrated because we don't ask the questions because we're scared if we do, we don't know what to do. If they say yes, just we've, be there. We've run out of time, so I'm going to send people to your book. <laughs> it's Depression, Anxiety, and Other Things We Don't Want to Talk About. It's available nationwide where books are sold.